Howdy, Doug Scheiding, Rogue Cookers, Head Country Brand Ambassador. Back today to talk about ribs. First off is picking a good rack of ribs. I get a St. Louis style, it's about three and a half, four pounds, then we'll trim it up. What I'm looking for in the meat is I'm looking for a nice deep red color. I'm also looking for not a lot of fat. I do want little striations of fat between the ribs. So I do want that, but you just don't want the big globs of fat on there. I trim it off. We're trying to make it look like a perfect rectangle. And typically, we'll trim it down to about 10 bones. And the reason I trim it down to, to 10 bones is because a normal grill is about 19 inches deep. So that rack, you can get a rack from front to back. I also will remove the membrane. You'll put your knife at the top and push down real hard and you'll cut all the way down through. There's actually two membranes there. We're going to remove the, the thicker and the, the one on the top. And then you'll pull that from either one side to the other and hopefully that membrane comes off in one piece. So once you've got a good rectangle form for, of 10 bones, then it's time for seasoning. So what I will do is season the bottom uh, or the bone side first. I will put canola, grapeseed, or avocado oil, put that down as an adherent. I like to only put one rub on the bottom. Try not to put a rub with a lot of sugar because that sugar can burn. Usually if it gets above 325 degrees, that sugar will burn and it'll be a little bitter. In this case, I always use the original Head Country seasoning. Flip it over, and then I like to do layering of flavors. So I use at least two to three. I always put the original championship down first, and then I put High Plains heat, heat on second. So after you put both layers of rub down, I'll spritz it, and then I'll let it sit there for probably only about 10 minutes or so. After about 10 to 15 minutes, you've got your grill going. I like to put it on the grill, put the thicker side towards the back of the grill. I believe that you know, as you're going in and out of the grill, that's gonna maintain a little more of a constant temperature and cook a little more evenly. You'll put it on the, on the grill and for three hours. Put it on without any foil or anything, just put it front, front to back, and then you're going to spritz it. I use apple juice, I just keep it simple. What you're doing every 30 minutes is spritzing it and just making it moist. This will help so that you don't have the hard bark develop. Then at three hours, you're ready to wrap. You'll put the, the rack from the grill onto the aluminum foil. I'll also put a little light coating of brown sugar uh, on the top. And I actually use Coke. You can use a lot of things, Coke, Dr. Pepper. Use some moisture like you do uh, with your other meats when you wrap. So use about three to four ounces of Coke per rack. And so then I fold the, the, the aluminum foil. I don't fold it neatly like a present, uh, like we do you know, with a brisket. I actually do it as an A-frame. So I'll bring the sides up, crumple them up, and then I'll bring the, the uh, the long side up. They go on back onto the grill and we're going to keep them in the foil for two and a half, maybe two and three quarters of an hour. I'll typically go down on temperature. What I'm trying to do is just make sure we don't burn uh, the ribs. Once, uh, once they've gone for about two and a half, two and three quarters of an hour, I will pull each of them off. Racks are in the foil so I'll, I'll open it up then I will have some glaze. A lot of times I'll just use something like apple habanero, put it down on the rib, and then lightly use a brush and kind of brush it back and forth. Do that for all your racks of ribs, then put it back on the grill. Again, 250 degrees is fine. And then let the glaze set for about five minutes. So then after five minutes, put it on your cutting board. And then I like to use a, an electric knife. To cut, uh, to cut ribs. And then I cut from the top. I never turn it over because I want that top of the rack of the ribs to look as perfect as possible. And good luck the next time you cook them.